we have Tim Ord on the line. Is that true, Tim Ord? Hello. Yep. Yeah, we're here. Fantastic. Here. So, guys, every right Tuesday after. and Thursday, Tim Ord comes on the Tom O'Brien Show. It's the Ord-Oracle.com. Uh, we deeply appreciate his analysis, and it's always extremely insightful. So go give him a check out. That's ord-oracle.com. And uh, Tim, I am just getting your chart up now. Just give me one moment while okay. I do that. That's right. No hurry. Perfect. All right. So we have chart one up. This is the SPX. Yeah, okay. SPX and uh, the second window up from the bottom is the SPX. PX VIX ratio, and this is a weekly chart. And the only thing I want to point out on this is um, this chart goes back to about mid 2017. And normally, when you get a higher high on the SPX on a weekly time frame, and you get a lower high on the SPX, uh, you got a divergence. And usually, those are at intermediate term highs. And the last time that happened was at the high of October 2022. The SPs made higher highs, and that ratio, SPX, made lower highs. And we've been going on. Uh, the, all the uh, the light pink areas are those divergence in the past, and they all came at worthwhile highs. You know, even the, the October or the March 2020 COVID crash, it predicted that. It warned that uh, decline was coming. But uh, on the current time frame from about 2000, mid-2020, or actually early 2023, uh, I got the blue areas every time the SP's made a higher high, that ratio has made a higher high, even on the current uptrend uh, going into the late March, early high, that ratio has made higher high. The market has since pulled back, uh, but what I wanted to point out on this chart if the SPs do turn up and go back up and make a higher high, which I think they will, and that ratio, the SPX VIX ratio on the weekly time frame makes a lower high, that'll be the time to worry. So I'm thinking this decline is probably just going down to fill the gap that happened around that 500 on the SPY. I think to fill it, it needs to get to a, a 5, 496 area on the SPY. I think is probably what's happening here. Mm -hmm. But there was no divergence of intermediate term scale on the on that last high, so I'm thinking this is kind of a normal pullback in an uptrend. So let's, let's flip to uh, chart two. Fantastic! Give me one moment. All right, we have chart two up right now. Right, this is the uh, Zwag Breath Thrust Indicator. It's a mouthful, but uh, would you like the bottom window? Uh, is the uh, NYSE advanced divided by the total NYSE uh, stocks with the 10 day average. When you get down below minus four, which we are, and we did here like a day or two ago, uh, it's usually that's an oversold condition. And what you like to see when you hit 0.04, you like it to go right back to 0.06 within 10 days. Now, if you do that, we haven't done it yet because we're just hit that blow it up. I think we hit 0.35 on this uh, recent decline. and But within 10 days of that thing turning around, which has actually started to turn around, so the count has started now, but within 10 days that needs to get back to 0.6. And if it does, that would open the door for another impulse wave to the upside. The red lines on this chart, or, or not horizontal, but vertical, are the times when this uh, Zwag breath, I call it ZBT, Zag Breath Thrust Indicator. ZBT is just easier to say. And I marked a point 0.4 with the red line, then when it got to point 0.6, that's the blue line. And during the uh, uh, base period of 2022, part of 2023, he had uh, three ZBTs there. Then he had one in October of 2023. That kind of set off the ignited that rally that from the October of last year to the current rally. So now we, di we did get a point, you know, blow a point oh four. Within the next two weeks, if we get point oh six, that uh, suggests another powerful rally is coming. If we don't, mm -hmm. uh, then the market could get a little mushy here going forward. So I'll have to wait and see how this uh, rally kind of turns out. But it's something that we're watching for. So we got two different things going on here. You got on page one or, or chart one the uh, 
weekly SPX fix ratio on the next rally, it needs to hit a new high along with the S&Ps. If it does that, the uptrend on a bigger time frames and scale. Then on uh, graph two, which is the uh, Zwag breath thrust indicator, the next rally needs to get to 0.6 uh, on the to show that you got strength to keep going. So if either if both of those don't settle, we're probably at best in a trading range. And there's a little saying too, like uh, uh, in May go away or something like that. There's an old saying. So will that uh, will that be uh, possible this year? Possible it depends on those two charts. So we'll have to kind of wait and see. I see we're running out about of time here. I don't know if we got to get get to chart three or not but yeah well i can uh, i can bring it up as well it's gonna be a second but yeah i can i can see it a little bit how this you know you have the es mini trading right now you know we're at least at 5050 i think the spy is trading what right under 500 so we're at 499 right now you know a lot of this run-up had been going because of the ideas of lower interest rates obviously that has changed a little bit but it, i could see this also being kind of um a general kind of overreaction like in this oversold area but uh tim ord stay right there folks we'll be right back with tim ord of the ord oracle uh in just a short minute welcome back folks this is jacob shoot filling in for tom o'brien we're with tim ord of the ord oracle again here is the website this is ord oracle.com uh, go give him a check out tim uh we are on chart three right now this is tlt vvix i'm um, actually interested yep. to hear what's going on with this yeah, this is, uh, I do a lot of charts that measure acceleration of different type indicators because if the market's just slowly moving up or slowly moving down, that trend's going to continue. But if you get kind of a, a short, I don't know, violence, the wrong word, but acceleration either up or down, chances are you get to a reversal pretty quick. And, I, and this is a TLT to a VVIX ratio. The VVIX is the VIX of the VIX. So it seems to work pretty well. I used this chart, matter of fact, last October. I think even on your sh uh, show that I was noticing this indicator was going up as the SPs was going down, mm -hmm. and that's that light blue area back in October of uh, last year. And um, and I waited until Friday because a lot of times Friday you get signals that seem to be uh, pretty effective. And that actually picked the day of that low right at the bottom there. And this indicator is the one I uh, used to pick out that low. We got something similar going on right now. Usually this indicator uh, on a short-term time frame goes up and down with the S&Ps. And so, but over the last three, four, or up three days, I think it is, even today, uh, even though the S&Ps are off just a smidge here, this this ratio is going higher. This is just a daily TLT to BBX ratio. And so we're probably entering in some sort of a low. And if you look at the top window, it's a 10 day average, uh, or actually it's a rate of change on a 10 day average, which is two weeks. And next one to lower is the RSI on a 10 day average, which is also two weeks. And both of them hit oversold here about three days ago. And both those indicators or the indicators have turned up, even though the SPs have not. So we're probably, you know, messing around with the low here. How low is low? Uh, most likely, let's go to chart four. Yep. And most likely, I, I got a, a, a the blue areas across the chart going horizontal are gaps. We got a gap above us. We got a gap below us. And to really fill that gap, we need to get to 496. I think the market's. It's just trying to fill that gap for some reason, and I'm thinking this is, is probably going to do it. But if you look at the second window up from the bottom, this is real curious here. Normally, when the market goes down, the VIX goes up. And if the market goes up, the VIX goes down. Over the last three days, the VIX has actually gone down with the S&Ps going down, not counting, uh, uh, actually uh, counting today, I guess would be. But that's unusual. Uh, and also, when the VIX gets above its upper Bollinger Band, usually you're looking for a low, and that happened about three days ago. And we closed above the bid, or we closed on the Bollinger Band two days ago. Yes, they were below the Bollinger Band. The mark was down, and also the VIX was down. And then today again, we're down, and the VIX is down again. So this is not the start of a big decline. This is the ending of some sort of a 
a correction phase here, but we still may close the gap at 496. The way we do it today, or you know, probably not today, could hit it tomorrow, and that probably will complete the decline. So, evidently, there's a lot of open interest on puts and calls at around that 496 area on the SPYs. And the futures, that's right around 500 on the June futures. So, that's probably where we're going to head. So I have to bear with it. We do have panics in the ticks and trend. The 10 day is right at 1.2, which is the number you need to, to have a panic bottom. The five day is around 1.35 or at 1.37. That's the bottom window. So, but can the market still push lower today and tomorrow? Yeah, probably. Until we probably get that gap filled. Um, I got long here actually three, four, last Friday to be exact because I did get panic in the ticks and trend on a uh, on a daily basis and i thought we were going to start bobbing up in that process and uh, we actually kind of broke through but um, i'm kind of just going to wait it out because i don't think this is uh, this is not a top of any consequence this is the top of uh, another trend that's probably going to break to new highs uh, if we're lucky maybe still this month if not probably in may and from may uh, from May, we'll have to wait and see what uh, the ZBT says and what the, uh, the uh, SPX VIX ratio says. So uh, I don't know what, uh, what's going to happen up there. I think the bigger trend in general this year will be an up year, and I thought we might match last year um, as far as, you know, up 27%. And that still may happen. Uh, depends on just how much panic we get. Let's flip to chart six real quick. Absolutely. All right, we're on chart six. Chart six. The only reason why I think this rally is not done, there's really no top of a basing period. And this is the, uh, this is the uh, SPX monthly chart. And if you notice, back in October of 2021, there was a divergence. Uh, the SPX ratio on a monthly time frame made a divergence where the uh, SPX made higher highs. That ratio made uh, lower highs. Currently, uh, we made higher highs on the SPX. That ratio made higher highs. So if we turn around and go back up and make new highs, and that monthly chart makes a lower high on the SPX VIX ratio, I think trouble can be found. But I'm thinking we'll still get to 5,700 um, at some point this year uh, because there's a head and shoulders bottom, and a lot of times these, these projections on the head and shoulders bottom do give accurate readings where the market can go. And if you do the measurement on this head and shoulders bottom formation, does give a projection of around 5,700 on the SPX. And we only did a 50% retracement. So I think that, that that move we had going into the bottom of 2022 was just a uh, consolidation phase, and now we're in an impulse wave. So I don't think a top of any consequences being made here. So, but it's kind of ugly on a short term basis, but the bigger time see, frames, yep. I think, are, are just fine. I don't see any big trouble coming here yet. So, and so you can still see that uh, 5,700 uh, at the end of the year? Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll reach it. You know, I don't know exactly what time I reach it. I don't see anything, you know, forming here. Uh, on the bigger time frame, especially if you get the VIX, that the SPX VIX ratio does a really good job warning that you're going into an minute term high because the VIX starts going up uh, before the actual top happens, and that hasn't happened yet. So um, we'll have to wait and see. But, but so I'm, I'm actually still bullish here. I don't, you know, I'll probably have to wait to possibly 496 on the SBY before we turn up. But I see. I think newer highs are still coming. Fantastic. Well, Tim Ward, stay, uh, stay right there. We still have a few more charts to go over. Okay. Folks, we will be uh, right back. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup. I am with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, we were just looking at the potential movement for the SPX going forward. Uh, Tim, you're still with us. Yep, I'm here. And uh, let's, let's go to chart seven. Yeah. So, as uh, far as the s I think the intermediate term trends up. The short term trend, I think, is bobbing, but we may fill the gap at 496. And then from there, we'll, we'll take another shot at rallying because we got pretty much a lot of indicators and in, are set up. But, you know, the market is, is going to probably go to that 
you know, uh, uh, 496 area. But anyhow, let's start seven. Yes. What Can you explain to me, because I, I think this is the first time I'm seeing this, what the pre-inflation index is? Oh, the inflation, deflation? Yeah, I say it says P-ring or Pring. Oh, Pring, uh, yeah, Martin Pring uh, created this uh, indicator. Uh, he's a technical analysis guy like uh, like uh, me. Uh, if you Google, Mar- I think his first name is Martin Pring. Okay. And, and he created this inflation-deflation ratio. Fantastic. So, Anyways, yeah, I just was uh, curious. He never, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, I was just saying I was curious. Yeah, yeah, it's Martin Prings. So, you know, I, uh, he had in place. So, you know, I combined the two and created a ratio out of it, and it seems to work pretty well. Uh, so it's, this is, uh, yeah, the monthly ratio going back to, uh, like, like, 1990 or thereabouts. And so, you know, that's the top window is the RSI for that ratio. The ratio the second window down. Uh, the middle window is the uh, monthly XAU. The bottom window is the XAU gold ratio on the monthly time frame. That goes back to 1984. But what I want to show is where we are on really on the bigger time frames. And so when this ratio, um, inflation-deflation ratio, when it's just rising, it's usually bullish for the market. When declining, it's usually bearish for the market. It's not an ideal indicator, but it does work well. And we're up, I circled in blue, uh, the inflation-deflation ratio on the monthly time frames, and it's up against that trend line, kind of a dotted blue trend line. If it breaks that trend line, um, I, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to see. I don't know how to really do it because I wanted to present the bigger time frame, where we are in the bigger time frames. And, but you know, we're up against that trend line, that mm-hmm. dotted trend line coming down from connecting the highs going back to 2022 highs. If we break that high, it's probably going to be a significant move in the gold market, uh, actually for gold stocks. That'd be the XAU. I even got a little trend line drawn on the XAU there. Uh, haven't drawn it real well, but we're up against a trend line on that XAU. And the bottom window is another important trend line. And it's also up against a trend line going all the way back to 1996. It looks like maybe 19, yeah, 1996. Yeah, and we're smack against that trend line right too. To get through that trend line, it's it's around 0.06, and we're 0.057. So on a on a bigger time frame, we're right at that trend line. And a break of that trend line, which is a 29 tr- uh, year trend line, it would really change the dynamics of the gold market. Uh, this is pretty much situated for the gold market, not gold. So it's predicting what the gold stocks will do, right. not so much what gold will do. But if you break that line, a 28-year trend line, that would probably open the door something similar to what happened uh, at the 2002 lows. Um, it would be a significant, I don't know, it, it would be significant. Well, at least, in my opinion, we'd at least get back to, uh, I have another trend line drawn across there horizontally on the XEU gold ratio. It's around uh, point. 175. My opinion, if we break that trend line coming down from the uh, 1996 highs, we most likely would rally back to that trend line at uh, 0.175. The the, the horizontal trend line, right? Yeah, yeah, that horizontal line. So that would be my guess where we would go. It would be, and probably be a fairly uh, powerful move because once you break a 28 year trend line, it's, it's usually. It would be the opposite of what was happening here because the market really hasn't changed a lot as far as that ratio on the XEU gold ratio. More or less, it bounced around, it looks like about 0.05 to 0.08, looks like, and really going nowhere since uh, 2016. It kind of just stayed in a narrow mm-hmm. trading range. After a narrow trading range, usually you get an impulse wave. After an impulse wave, you get a narrow trading range. So, what this implies. Once you break that trend line, you'll probably get a big surge. And that surge, in my opinion, maybe finds a resistance of 0.175 because that's where some previous lows were in the past. And to what that would indicate in gold stocks itself, it would be, uh, well, we're, we're say we're 0.06, just round off numbers, you get a point. 
point oh eight or point one eight is six times. Or, no, six be right. three times, be three hundred, be a three hundred percent move. And even with an That's increasing what, in gold as well, you know the XAU so right. those gold stocks would have to rally at an even higher rate as well. As opposed to just right. saying, yeah, that's, that's impressive, just, actually. You're right. That's not even gold changing. That's right. Gold staying exactly where it is and just gold stocks. So it would be a 300-point move in gold stocks while gold goes uh, yeah. higher. So Jeez. something significant in this vicinity is happening right now. Yeah. And I keep pointing that out because has it, has it broke that? No. Will it break it? You know, at some point, yes. You know, will it break it next week? Don't know. Will it break this year? Most likely. Um, the hard part is, you know, when it, when it, you know when it will break it. So let's look at you know where we are, as far as uh, when we'll break that line. Sure. And I think I, I don't, I don't. Know. Okay, here's a chart number eight. Yep. This is the shorter time frames, and this is an inflation deflation ratio on the weekly time frame. And uh, we did get you know, uh, so. How to get signals on this indicator is when this indicator, when the RSI of this uh, inflation deflation ratio on a weekly time frame, not a daily, on a weekly time frame falls below 30 and closes above 30. So all those blue lines across there are times when the RSI hit 30 and turned up, which is a, I got the blue arrows pointing to those times. The last time we had it here, I think it was sometime in March. And so we rallied pretty strongly off those lows. And we're not even near uh, on a weekly time frame of any high of any consequence. Normally, you get up to RSI up around 70 or so, you'll get a, a high. And those red lines are uh, times when you got high. So we're on a buy signal right now on this ratio. And if you notice, if you look at the bottom, or actually the second window up, which is a weekly XAU, I had some bold circles on those. those um, the bold circles are times when you get uh, the weekly RSI about the same price as before. So we got a, a signal back in October of last year, pretty close to the same price where we got it again this year. So it's kind of a two RSI buys in the same spot. Same thing happened in 2018 and 19. You got pretty close to the same prices, double buy signals at the same price. And you had at the 2016 low, you got a buy signal. Um, nothing really happened. You got another buy signal, and the market really took off. Mm. So I'm thinking the double buy signal in the same price is going to lead to, a, a, I think, a major impulse wave. Yeah, totally. That's yeah. What, Tim, stay, stay right so. there because I want to hear the rest of this, especially with chart nine as well. But folks, we'll be uh, we're right back. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup. We are with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. We were just looking at the uh, potential moves for gold, what it is doing uh, regarding some other indicators. I want to say, too, Tim, we have a short segment here, but uh, if you're new to listening to TFNN, and I know we have a bunch of new people, um, and you ever really want to learn and like dig into what Tim's talking about as well, on our services page on TFNN.com, uh, we actually have a few webinars uh, that Tim had done, and he goes through a lot of the different indicators he looks at and, and, and why they matter to him. Anyways, Tim, we're looking at uh, chart eight right now. All right, chart eight. Uh, the only thing I want to say about this, this is, uh, this is kind of an intermittent term chart. These are multi-month. Um, I, for, I forgot I added, I think it's at least six-month rallies normally. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some are shorter, but most of them are six months or longer. So anyhow, I'll flip to chart nine. Yep. So this is just a, a short term. You know, basically the blue areas, or when those two indicators, the bottom window is the 18-day average up-down volume um, uh, indicator. The next higher window is the uh, GDX 18-day average of the advanced decline. So as long as those two indicators stay above minus 10, the minus 10 is the magic number, uh, the uptrend is intact. And so we kind of, in March, looks like the first of March there, gave a buy signal. And that remains on a buy signal. And we kind of rocketed it up here. And to me, it looks like we're probably in a wave four of an L wave five up. Uh, I got it marked there on the chart uh, right uh, right below the uh, quote window there as in blue. And I think we're, we're screwing around with uh, wave four right now. I don't know if we're completing wave four or wave four is complete. But it does look like since those two indicators on bottom are staying well above minus 10, it suggests that the market's just 
internals are still strong. They're not declining. They're going sideways up around plus 20 range, both of them. That tells me probably another strong rally is coming, which will be way five. And that will break the new highs. How high, I don't know yet. But on a short-term basis, uh, GDX is still on a buy signal. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. Obviously, the amount of effort you put in these charts is, is wild, and they're so informative. Folks, go visit him at board-oracle.com. Uh, folks, thank you so much for joining me today and, and listening to myself and Tim Ward. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. Take care.